Uh, hi guys, my name is Yu Lin, and today's topic will be memoization. Now, before I start uh, getting into the details on memoization, let me ask you a question. If you had to solve a complex math problem, and you solved part of the problem that you need to get to the final problem, later on you realize you need to use that part again. Are you going to solve that part again? No, right? You're just going to look back at the answer and see what you got. You're not going to walk through all the steps of solving it again. That's just a waste of time. Can't imagine anyone doing that. <laughs> so now, when we program, we should, if possible, we should aim to do the same thing. Now that's where memoization comes in. So what exactly is memoization? All right, so memoization is a top-down, depth-first optimization technique that stores a previously computed result so that it does not need to be recomputed. You can think of it as uh, it breaks down a complex problem into multiple subproblems. Then the memorized algorithm checks if the subproblem, the result of the subproblem, is stored in a table, which could be an array, a hash, or a map. If it is available in the table, it's just going to grab that data from the table. It's not going to recompute, recalculate it. If the table does not contain the result, then uh, the memorized, memorized algorithm should enter the, that value, that result, into the table. Now, how it does it, it depends a little bit on what language you're working in and how exactly you're storing it. But uh, I'll show you an example of a JavaScript version for the Fibonacci sequence later. So here is, oh, I'm sure everyone's aware, this is a Fibonacci numbers. They're very common. And uh, so normally, to get the Fibonacci number of one number, it has to, you have to take the sum of the Fibonacci of the previous two numbers. So Fibonacci of 10 is, a, is derived from the Fibonacci of 9 plus the Fibonacci of 8. As you can see, if in a normal, say a recursive normal Fibonacci solution without memoization, without storing anything in the table, just a regular, you know, simple function to solve it, you would have to traverse to get Fibonacci of 10, you would have to traverse and get Fibonacci of 9 along Fibonacci of 8. And then to get Fibonacci of 9, you have to get 8 and 7. And then for Fib of 8, you have to get Fib of 7, Fib of 6. You're just doing a lot of the same computation over and over and over. It's very uh, inefficient. It, just, it, ca it can cause your program to hang or to you know, take a long time, depending on how far you get. Obviously, if it's small numbers, it's OK, because the computers are relatively fast. But once you get, say, like a Fibonacci number of 45 or 50, you can see how many extra times you're computing. And that's just very wasteful. So on to the fun stuff. So this is a, a memorized function that I'll, I actually pulled this from a book. It's out, I'll, I have the source listed at the end. But uh, this function is written in JavaScript. And this is uh, how you write a function that, that will memorize whatever function you pass in. So as you can see, this memorized function takes a, takes a function. A lookup table is generated or created. Then uh, it returns the function and spreads out the arguments. Now, you see, uh, at least for JavaScript, it says const key equals json.stringify. And the reason we, write, we use json.stringify is that when you want to store, you, so that you can store the keys as strings in the lookup table. And then uh, finally, when, uh, when it's being memorized, it checks. It checks if the lookup table has the key. If it, doesn't ha if it has the key, it returns it. If it doesn't have the key, it's going to create it. Then that's how it's stored. Now, we're talking about the basic recursive solution for a Fibonacci number. Now, on the left is the basic solution. And on the bottom, you can see I wrote a little bit of co code to show you how to get the time, say you want to to paste this into the console, your Chrome console. If you paste that exact code from top down, you would be able to get the amount of time it took for this uh, whole thing to run, so for Fibonacci 45 at least. And then on the right side, we use the memoized version where we pass in the same Fibonacci algorithm inside. Now we can 
see the performance difference. Fibonacci 45 without memorization takes about 15 seconds. Fibonacci 45 with memorization is almost instantaneous. That's a big difference. I mean, I was gonna do a graph, but zero and like 15 seconds, it doesn't really uh, work out well. <laughs> so why does it change so much? That's because there's a shift in the big old notation, the time-space com complexity. The O of n value for a Fibonacci sequence without memorization is O of uh, 2 to the n power. It's actually a little bit less than that because Fibonacci itself, the fib of 1 and fib of 0 is a, is a fixed value. You don't really have to calculate that. But for our purposes, all intents and purposes, this will work. And then the O of n value for a Fibonacci sequence with memorization is just O of n. So we can see a graph of the algorithm complexity versus the growth of input, the n value. Without memorization, you see the yellow dotted line. It's a O of n squared. And then you can look at it with the linear time. It's just a linear line. So that means as the input, as your input is growing, it's going to have a huge influence on how fast your program can run. So for small, small, small inputs, it's fine. Probably without memorization, you probably don't have to write all that. But if it gets really large, you should consider using it if it's applicable. Now we spoke about all the awesome things about memorization. So we have to talk about drawbacks. It's unfortunate. But uh, it does sacrifice space for speed. You have to store all those values somewhere. Those computer results for a computer has to be stored somewhere. Just like if you solve the problem, you'd probably have the solution. If it's not in your head, it's going to be on a piece of paper. That's space. You wrote, you wrote it somewhere. So you have to remember that. And depending on what you, what you need from your program, you might not be able to afford that sacrifice. And it's used for primarily pure functions where you expect the same input to return the same output. If you're, getting a, if you're getting a function where you pass in parameters that have the same input but it's giving different outputs, you probably can't use, you, you can't use memorization for that because when you look up the table, it doesn't make sense. It could be a different value. It has to be the same value. And in summary, we, work, we try to work smarter, not harder. And you want the computer to do the same thing. And further reading, I mean, memorization is very similar to something known as dynamic programming. So I encourage everyone to read about it. Dynamic programming offers a bottom-up solution of solving it, and memorization is top-down. And uh, there's also caching, which is related to memorization. So it's topics that are interesting and related to it. And these are my sources. And that's about it, guys. <laughs>